Power Query is great for extracting data from a source, reshaping it, then loading it into Excel. Now a common part of that transformation process involves Power Query using column headers to reference each column. So when the column headers change in the source data, it gives us a big problem. Recently, my friend Celia Alves released a YouTube video giving her solution to this common problem. There's so much good stuff in that video showing how to use M code formulas and list techniques. You should definitely check it out. And there's a link in the descriptions box below. But as I was watching that video, I thought this isn't the way that I solve that problem. So I wanted to share with you two other ways that you can rename columns in Power Query even when the column names change. Celia's approach and my two approaches here are all different. So in the interest of learning, I thought it would be good to share all these techniques. If you want to work along with this video, you can find a link in the descriptions box of where to find the support files. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. So here's the file that we're going to build our Power Query solution on. It has a number of fixed columns and the three columns at the end give us the sales data for the previous three weeks. Okay, let's load this data into Power Query. So here I have a blank Excel workbook. I'll select data, get data from file, from workbook. Then navigate to the place where the sample data is, select that and click import. The navigator window opens up. I'll select the data tab and then click transform data. If you have the standard Power Query setup, it means that in the applied steps, we have promoted headers and changed type. At the moment we don't need either of those. So we'll click on the crosses to delete those. Okay, let's clean up our data. So the first thing we want to do is to remove the top three rows. So from the home menu, Remove rows, remove top rows, I'll enter three into the dialog box and click OK. Now I can promote headers. And if you have the standard Power Query setup applied, then changed type will be applied automatically. If not, select all the columns, go to transform and then go to detect data type. OK, let's close and load this into Excel. So home. Close and load, close and load two. I'll select a table in the existing worksheet in cell A1 and click OK. Perfect, everything worked fine. However, the issue comes the next week when we receive a new file. So I'll just rename my files. And then as soon as I click refresh, you see we get an error. And that's because these column headings are different every single week. So if I look at my new data source, so in the new data source, we have sales of the 3rd of January, the 27th of December and the 20th of December but in the original data source, we had the 27th of December, the 20th of December, and the 13th of December. So I'll close that. Let's go back into our query. I'll select View and click Advanced Editor. And here you can see where the problem is. It's in the Changed Type step, because it references each of those columns by their name. So let's find a way of getting around this. I'll click cancel on that and I'll delete the changed type step. Let's start with solution number one, which just uses the standard Power Query user interface. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to unpivot the columns. So I will select the columns where the name doesn't change. I'll go to transform, unpivot columns, unpivot other columns. Okay, now let's add an index column. So add column, index column, I'll go from zero. Now here comes the interesting part. With the index column selected, I can go to transform, 
standard, and then apply a modulo. This calculates the remainder of dividing each number in the selected column by a specified value. We had three columns that we needed to rename, so I will enter three into that box there, and then click OK. We no longer need the attribute column that was created during the unpivot process. So I press delete on that. Then I will select the index column and pivot that column. And the values column is the value column because that's the one that contains the numbers. I'll click OK on that. I now have three columns numbered 0, 1 and 2. So I can easily rename those. So last week's sales, two weeks ago, and three weeks ago. Now I can select my columns, detect data types, home, and we'll load that back into Excel. And as you can see, that error has now gone. It's loaded that data correctly. If we look at the advanced editor window, you'll notice that in all of that code, there is no reference to the original column headings. Now it doesn't matter what the last three column names are in our source data, it will still load correctly. Okay, now let's try solution number two. So here we are back in our query and I'm just going to delete all of the steps until the end. So we just have the promoted header step. So the changed type has not yet been applied. Now all I'm going to do is to rename my columns as normal. So last week's sales, two weeks ago. And three weeks ago. Now hopefully you've got the formula bar visible. If not, come up to the view ribbon and click formula bar. As you can see in this formula, it references the specific column names. But if we could reference those columns by position, that would mean we wouldn't need to use the column names. So let's try that. I'll click in there, delete the name of the column. And I'm going to use the function table column names. Open bracket. And I want the column name from the promoted headers table. So from the previous step. So hash. And then in double quotes, I can select promoted headers from the IntelliSense. And then I just want column six and that's in curly brackets. Now, why is it column six? Because Power Query starts counting from zero. So column zero, column one, column two, column three, column four, column five. So last week's sales is column six. I'll click off my formula bar. And as you can see, it's still called last week's sales, but it's referenced using the column number. So I will copy that. over the top of one of the other column headers. That's column seven. That's column eight. And there we go. I can now select all the columns, go to transform, detect data types, home, close and load. And there we go, once again, our data now refreshes automatically. If we come into the advanced editor, we can see the code in there much shorter. And this also doesn't reference any of the last three column headings that we had in our source file. So that's it for this video. It goes to prove that there are multiple ways of solving the same problem in Power Query. Celia's approach and my approaches are all completely different, yet they achieve the same result. Now, which method you use is up to you. 
But in the process of comparing these three approaches, I hope you've learned a lot about the techniques and the methods that we can use inside Power Query to solve problems. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.